Hey, thanks for watching this video. I'm going to cover some common algebraic parent functions. And you should be able to do a couple things before you watch this video. You should know how to plot points on a graph. And you should understand some basic arithmetic, some basic operations, such as squaring, cubing, um, square rooting, cube rooting, taking a reciprocal, and taking an absolute value. If you're not as familiar with those functions as you might like, you might keep a calculator handy so you can verify the things that I'm showing you. And you may want to pause throughout the video if you're trying to take notes. Let's get started. So we're going to start with some common parent functions that are algebraic. Uh, the reason I say algebraic is because there are other types of parent functions that are, for example, trigonometric, like sine and cosine. We're not going to get into those here. So what is a parent function? It's, it's some sort of known function that we manipulate in some way. And one of the things we do is apply transformations. I'm not going to cover transformations in this video. I'm just going to look at the common parent functions. So what are the common algebraic parent functions? y equals x is one of them. y equals the absolute value of x. y equals 1 over x. y equals x squared. y equals x cubed. Those are called power functions. y equals the square root of x. And finally, y equals the cube root of x. We're going to be looking at these seven functions in this video. And all of these functions have uh, something in common. They all input x to one high order operation, um, except for the y equals x function. I'm throwing that one in there as a warm up for the rest of these. It's not really that useful because you, you should be familiar with graphing things like y equals x already. All right, so one higher order operation like taking the absolute value, cubing, cube rooting, etc. Okay. Let's start with the y equals x function. This is a linear function because x is to the first power. We're going to graph this and understand its shape by generating an xy table. Before you generate any xy table, it's good to know what x values you can plug in. And that's what we call domain. For this function, x can be any real number. There's no operations restricting what x is. So we generate our xy table, we have our x column, we know we can plug in any real number we want. The y column will be y values that are equal to the x values in the x column. Whenever I generate my x values, um, I like to consider negative x values, 0, and positive x values. Notice zeros in the middle, and as I go up, um, I've got negative x values increasing in the negative direction and positive x values on the bottom increasing in the positive direction. So I've got the dot, dot, dot to indicate that this goes on forever in both directions. Now the y values in this xy table are exactly the same as the x values by the definition of the equation. And if we plot those points on a graph, we get something like this. And you can see that if we continue the pattern forever in both directions, then we actually get this very simple straight line with a slope of 1, if you're familiar with slope. So the y equals x function is a very simple linear function. Again, this is the only parent function we're covering that does not have a high order operation on it. But it's a good warm up. So let's apply this to the rest of our parent functions, such as y equals the absolute value of x. This is the absolute value function. And again, we can take the absolute value of any x value. So x can be any real number. Let's generate our xy table. Again, negative x values, 0, and positive x values. And then the y values are going to be the absolute values of those x's, which simply turns all of them positive, except for 0. All right. Uh, and if we plot those points, it's very similar on the right-hand side here to the x function. But you notice on the left-hand side, instead of having negative y values, you get the positive y values. So it's like flipping the left side of that x function up, up above the x-axis. And so we get this v-shape. And if we understand this goes on forever in both directions, we can graph it like this. So the absolute value function gives us a v-shape. It's symmetric over the y-axis and is an even function. 
you don't have to understand what an even function in is necessarily. I just want to mention that for those who understand. Y equals 1 over X is called the reciprocal function, and you'll see why shortly. Now here, before we generate our XY table, we have to understand we can't plug in 0 for X. Our domain is every number except for 0. It can be positive, it can be negative. So let's look at the positive x values first, but not zero. Notice in this case, my x values from one, two, three on are increasing, those are easy. But if I'm going less than one, I can't go to zero. So I'm gonna look at some x values between one and zero, and I, there's an infinite number of them. So I've got a dot, dot, dot going this direction. The y values are one over those x values. They're the reciprocals. The reciprocal of one-fourth is four. The reciprocal of one-third is three, etc. The reciprocal of two is one-half. The reciprocal of one is itself one. All right, so if we plot those points, we can see that we get these ordered pairs that are getting really close to the y-axis and really close to the x-axis. And if we keep applying this forever in both directions, we get this curve that gets closer and closer to the y-axis and closer and closer to the x-axis. However, we've only considered the positive x values. The only restriction on x is that it can't be zero, so we have to consider what if x is negative. So we're gonna continue our xy table with negative x values. Again, getting closer and closer to zero, but not to zero. And if we generate the reciprocals of those negative inputs, we get negative outputs. So now when we plot these points, we get negative x values and negative y values. So we're down here in the third quadrant with a similar behavior. And continuing on uh, this pattern, we get another curve. Now both of these curves make up the graph of this parent function, y equals one over x. So this is one graph. You'll notice that this graph is symmetric over the origin. This is what we call an odd function. Something else unique about this particular parent function is because the graph gets infinitely close to the y and the x-axis, we call those asymptotes, which I've indicated here with the dashed green lines. Asymptotes are, are lines, or they don't have to be lines necessarily, but curves maybe, that your graph is getting infinitely close to on the ends, you know, as it goes up, right, down or left, it gets infinitely close to those lines, x equals zero, which is the y-axis, and y equals zero, which is the x-axis. All right, the y equals one over x function may be the, one of the more complex ones in this video. y equals x squared is called a quadratic function or the square function. We're back to letting x be anything because we can square any x value, any number. So let's generate our xy table. And again, we'll throw some negatives, zero, and some positives in there. And to generate the y values, we're just gonna square those x values. Remember, when you square a negative number, you get a positive number. So you kind of see a pattern with the y values. They're the same for the negative x values as they are for the positive x values. When you plot those points, you start to see a symmetry here over the y-axis for that reason. And when you connect the points together, you get this U shape. This is called a parabola. A quadratic graph is a parabola. It's symmetric over the y-axis, so it's an even function. Y equals X cubed is similar. It's a cubic function. Again, you can cube any number, so we can use any X value that we like in our table. So again, I'll choose negatives, zero, and positives. And then I'll cube those. When I cube a number, it means multiply by itself three times. So for example, negative three times negative three times negative three is negative 27. And if I apply that to those x values, which should be really quick, I get the corresponding y values. Now, here, when you cube negatives, you get negative numbers. Whereas the previous parent function, when you square negatives, you get positives. So you still see the same numbers over here in our y column, but the negative inputs give negative outputs and the positive inputs give positive outputs. If we plot those points, you notice on the right side we get positive y values and on the left side we get negative y values. Drawing the graph, 
We can see that the right side is kind of like our parabola from the y equals x squared function, but now the left side is the parabola kind of flipped upside down because now we have negative y values. This graph is symmetric over the origin, and we call it an odd function. The root functions tend to give students trouble if they don't have a lot of experience with them. This in particular is the square root function. The domain here we know we can't take the square root of a negative, so x cannot be negative. However, x can be zero, don't forget that. More so, when we generate our xy table, we get to pick the x values, so you don't want to pick them blindly. We want to pick x values that have nice square roots. This keeps us from having to pick up our calculator to calculate the y values. So what are some of those nice x values? Well, x can be zero, like we said, one, you can easily take the square root of one and get one. You can take the square root of four and get two. The square root of nine, we can get three. The square root of 16, the square root of 25, you see the pattern. You wanna pick perfect squares for your x values. And then the y values will be their corresponding square roots. Notice how the square roots here are very easy to calculate in our heads without a calculator. I did not put like 11 over here in my x column because I don't know what the square root of 11 is. So if we plot those points, notice that there's no x values over here on the left side. There's no points on the left side because x can't be negative. So this is one of the unique graphs that simply starts here at the point 0, 0 and goes to the right. And it does that forever. You notice by the dot, dot, dot here, I can keep plugging in positive x values bigger and bigger and bigger and plot those points. So the square root function is a bit unique in its graph for that reason. The last one is the cube root function, uh, which tends to present the most trouble for students. This is uh, because they don't know cube roots very well. So make sure you practice with this. Now, unlike square roots or even roots, where you can't put a negative inside, odd roots, including the cube root, you can have a negative input. So our domain here is any real number, even negatives. Now, again, because this is a root function, you want to pick x values that have nice cube roots. So I'm going to show those to you, but again, work to understand this and be able to generate them on your own. So um, the, cube, the perfect cubes are what we're going to plug in. So like 1, negative 1, 8, negative 8, 27, negative 27. And if we generate the cube roots, notice that we get really nice integers over here for our y values. There's no decimals. That makes them easy to generate without a calculator. If we plot those points, you'll notice the right side of this graph looks a lot like the square root function. But now we actually do have a left side because x can be negative. Whereas remember all the square root function, there was nothing on the left side. If we connect this, the left side looks very similar to the right side. That's because of the pattern with the numbers. They kind of repeat here. And we get symmetry over the origin. This is an odd function. So that is our last common algebraic parent function. Let's summarize real quickly. All of these common algebraic parent functions execute one high order operation on x, except for this first one, the y equals x function. That was just a straight line. The absolute value function was the V-shape. The reciprocal function was a bit unique. It had asymptotes on both the X and Y axes, and we had curves approaching both of those in quadrants one and three. The X squared function is the parabola. The X cubed function has a right side that looks like the parabola, but the left side is flipped down because we get negative outputs. The square root function is Unique in that there's no graph for negative x values because you can't plug negative x values into a square root. And last, we have the cube root function, which behaves like the square root function on the right side, kind of, but we have a symmetric piece on the left side because now we can input negative numbers. All right, that was a lot to take in, but I got it all into one video. Hopefully you paused and took notes as needed. Good luck with your parent functions, and you're probably going to move on to transformations soon.